Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome you guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about Avengers number one and what a freaking ride this is. We have Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in all their glory. And if you see like words in Spanish, like, sorry, I live in Argentina, so these editions are in Spanish, but they're exactly the same, the same to the ones printed back in the United States. And um, this is one really weird first appearance because... Um, you only see references to this issue. It's the last page. And maybe it's because it's just freaking weird. This story is surreal. Um, my hat just goes off to how the creativity and this beautiful madness that Jack Kirby and Stan Lee had. And um, even I, I found a retelling of the story and they just cut out the weirdest part of the story, which... For me, when we're gonna get into it, I think it deserves like a prequel mini series trying to explain that whole situation. So, we have Loki. He obviously hates the guts of Thor. Wants to take over Asgard. The normal classic Loki story. And his plan in this particular story is to set up the Incredible Hulk and get Hulk to fight or get Thor to fight Hulk, and that's gonna be. Thor's downfall, he's going to get his ass kicked by the Jade Giant. So what Loki does, he fools Hulk into destroying a train track, like he uses an illusion, to get Hulk to accidentally destroy the track, almost derailing it. But the thing is, what happens, Hulk is able to resolve the situation, but Hulk gets bad press. <laughs> he gets into the news that he's responsible for almost derailing this train because he's, for the for the news and stuff like that. Hulk is a menace. He's a danger. And this gets printed. Rick Jones finds out this whole situation. And what he does, is he calls, he tries to contact Fantastic Four so they can get on board and try to resolve this Hulk problem. Loki gets wind of this. And instead, instead, you see the radio signals. This part's just priceless. He uses his crazy as guardian magic and he sends the radio signals <laughs> to... Donald Blake, who is actually the Earth Earthling host of Thor. And before I get in, into deeper in the story, here's a I saw this the other day in Comic Tropes, the whole idea of these um, kid gangs, like these teams of young kids trying to get involved in doing good deeds and deeds and stuff and stuff like that. And it's really cool to see this the idea, the concept of kid gangs actually popping up in the first Avengers issue. So this transmission not only reaches Donald Blake on the radio. We also have Iron Man getting wind of this whole situation. We have Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne also finding out about this whole situation. I just love the whole idea that they use this like cannon they'd be shot out of as a means of transport. Fantastic Four do find about out about the situation, but they can't get involved. They have Fantastic Four stuff to deal with, but Thor, Iron Man, and Ant-Man and Wasp do arrive and heed Rick Jones' call into trying to find Hulk and save him because Rick Jones is Hulk's best friend. He wants the best for Hulk. He wants to help him in his situation. He, For Rick Jones, Hulk has been framed. So the Avengers try to find out, find Hulk and try to bring him in, try to find out what's going on, try to and enact justice <laughs> over this whole situation over the train and they find Hulk actually working in a circus and please Marvel give us a mini series where we find out how the hell Hulk ended up working in the circus please this incarnation of, of clown Hulk give us this story please it's just hilarious so and this is what I was talking to you guys about I have a retelling of the story in this compilation issue of the first Avengers story. And they skip over this whole situation here. We have the whole thing with the train. We have the Avengers arriving. And it just straight up jumps to the conflict between the Avengers defeating Loki at the end of the story. And it it's just a real shame. This can't be lost to time. We they we gotta get that story. So the first battle between Hulk and the Avengers is pretty epic. It's a lot of fun. Kirby's art is just 
it's so dynamic and it's it's super classic. I really enjoy, I've learned to enjoy it more and more over the years. But what happens is obviously the Avengers find out that Loki's hand was the one behind the whole situation with the train, trying to frame the Hulk. And so the Avengers try to avenge this situation. <laughs> Take down Loki, defeat him once and for all, so he stops causing trouble in Midgard. And the rest of the battle is pretty fun. It's the, the, the comic book logic and how they defeat Loki. It's just, it's so, it's just priceless. At least I really enjoyed it. And... This is basically the only reference that we always get from this issue is this last page in this panel. This is a total classic, but you never see the rest of the story, especially that circus part. So I hope you guys love it. Like, it's just really fun. These comic books from the 60s, especially the Stan, Stan Lee and Curry ones, they're, they're, they're such joy. Every time I read them, it just, it just makes me happy. It gives me a big smile on my face. So see you guys next time.